Hello everyone, this is Bob Brown with Community Coronavirus Update number 83. We'll talk about the new school recommendations that have been released this past week, uh, preserving hospital capacity, which is uh, something we need to start worrying about again. And I'd like to end with uh, what I would ta talk about, what I would call political leadership versus pandering. So, you know, the UMC guidelines were updated. Uh, here's the, you know, the usual suspects that are the authors that uh, you'll recognize a lot of names here. Um, basically, it confirms what the American Academy of Pediatrics said yesterday or last week and the CDC also re released this week. And basically, it's nice to know that pretty much all the uh, public health, infectious disease and pediatric organizations at both the national and state level say we should be doing this. We should be have focusing on vaccination. We should have universal masking in schools, K through 12. And of course, the other layered prevention measures because uh, public health, you never rely on just one, one layer. You rely on multiple layers. And so, yes, we need universal masking. We need school, school surveillance testing. Uh, there is no debate really. I mean, well, there's always debate, of course, but there's, there's quite a consensus that this is what we need to do. Um, the things that I think are bothering me is that it doesn't sound like our state wants to do that. And I think this, uh, why they want to do that is based on two common misperceptions. Uh, one is that kids are low risk, but they are not no risk. And you really need to run the numbers before you make a good decision. Uh, and natural immunity does not protect you. The people think that just because they had the coronavirus six, eight uh, months ago, that they're immune to the next one. They're not. You need a vaccine. And this is why we might overwhelm our hospitals. So school risks, if no mask, you need to run the numbers. So sure, there will be very few fatalities, won't have that many dead kids, but we'll have some dead kids and that's still a tragedy. So likely one or two in Lincoln, if we let it run, uh, we'll likely have anywhere somewhere in the 25 to 40 hospitalizations in Lincoln. That's too many. I don't know if we have the pediatric capacity to do that, to have that many sick kids in our hospitals in Lincoln with coronavirus, especially with everything else going on. Uh, we probably have 450 to 600 cases of long COVID, and this is data coming out lately. It's not just hospitalizations and death. Long COVID can cause significant disability. That's a lot of kids with long COVID in Lincoln. And the other thing is, is there are hospital capacity issues, that if there's massive spread, to un, uh, if, the, if there's massive spread to the schools, then it'll also spread to the unvaccinated family members and the vaccinated but in immunocompromised family members. And that would uh, create the potential to overwhelm our hospitals. Uh, so article is now coming out about long COVID. It's still early in kids for the data, but it is looking like that, yes, they do get long COVID like the adults, not as high rates, but they do get it. Uh, and you should be running the numbers on this. And so here's an example. I ran the numbers and this is the kind of stuff we should be seeing by the state, but we're not seeing from them. Uh, last week we talked about, you know, can you project hospitalizations, for example, and the answer is I think you can. Uh, and so uh, this is a, just a rough uh, guess based on Lincoln numbers, which we can do because we have Lincoln numbers stratified vaccination. So we can look at past hospitalization rates and come up with a best guess of somewhere in the two to 300 hospitalizations and, you know, 70 ish fatalities. If we were to let her rip through all the unvaccinated, uh, that's a problem because uh, I don't know if we have tech capacity for 293 people in the hospital in Lincoln, if it hit, comes too fast. Uh, we can do those projections because Lincoln Lancaster County provides that data. The state does not provide that data, and that's one of our big problems. Uh, best guess if I did the same thing at the state level is probably in the two to 3,000 hospitalization range. Uh, that's too many because we don't have capacity for that. Uh, you know, they'll go over to the governor's own website. Red is 1,000, and well, if we got two to 3,000, we got them too fast, we would overwhelm hospital capacity, and our numbers are headed up. So, uh, so Lincoln, I think we might be able to take care of our own population, but people don't realize we have to take care of not just Lincoln's population, but those around us. And at the state level, we're up to 147 hospitalizations. We were under 100 last week, and so this is going up pretty quickly. And of course, this is based on the infections a couple weeks ago, not the infections now. So if you have more infections, then you're going to have more hospitalizations. So this number is likely to keep going. Uh, how accurate is this? Well, it's kind of hard to say, but you can look uh, to the south and use them as a guide for will it happen here. Uh, if you look to the south, you know, everything's turning red and dark red to the south. Uh, Missouri, all the way, Arkansas, Louisiana, Florida, uh, Mississippi, Alabama. So what's happening there? If you look at the headlines, uh, what you'll see is hospital after hospital hitting capacity, Orlando a crisis mode, uh, Savannah, Georgia reinstating, reinstating uh, mask mandates in, in Georgia. Uh, Arkansas Children's uh, uh, having record number high of kids, higher than they had uh, last surge, uh, and not too far from us, Kansas City, uh, Children's Mercy in Kansas City also hitting capacity. Well, this gets to be a problem. Their numbers are still headed up. If they're at capacity, where are, gonna, they're, where are they going to ship the kids next? They are, they're going to probably have to start shipping them north to Omaha Children's. Well, if Omaha Children's starts filling up and then we start reopening with masking, uh, without masking, we could have... Well, I don't know where we're going to send our kids if they're already full of Iowa and Missouri kids. And so this is getting to be a problem. This is being very urgent. We cannot let this happen in the next couple of weeks until things calm down a little bit. So to start schools without universal mask in Nebraska is, is very, very reckless right now. Um, you know, and 
the, the other thing that keeps uh, it's almost becoming a, a, a running joke for some folks I know is what happens in the newspaper is some uh, recommendation from public health experts at the national level so the Centers for Disease Control Prevention comes out uh, Governor Ricketts says no I'm not going to do that uh, without really providing much rec rationale uh, then the reporters start calling uh, people like uh, like me for example so they call me and, and James Law and say well, what's up with this and so we say no that's not right here's the numbers here's why uh, and so it's kind of getting getting frustrated that there's no rationale coming from the state uh, and us pretty much saying no this is what really should be done and it's not just me and James it's people like you know uh, Mark uh, Mark Rupp uh, you know the, the problem we were talking about in this specific episode is the lack of data in Nebraska so uh, the national uh, you know uh, maps like this make Nebraska look okay, but this, this data is wrong because there's not a, a enough uh, regular reporting at the county level that this is not accurate data. Uh, it is accurate in Lincoln, but not for a lot of the rural counties because of a lack of consistency and timeliness of data. So in Lincoln, I can project these kind of numbers and say, you know, based on the CDC guidelines, we're in this orange substantial transmission re uh, uh, level uh, based on the CDC recommendations. We're almost up to the red high already because we have that data, lo uh, data locally, whereas out state Nebraska, they can't set their risk because they don't have access to the same kind of data. Uh, and you have people like Mark Rupp and James Lawler speaking up in their op-ed on Sunday, uh, also confirming, yes, we need school children to be wearing masks and we need to uh, be, uh, be focusing more and more on vaccinations. Uh, this morning, you had Dr. Jasmine Marcelin uh, from UNMC, also an infectious disease expert who happens to also be a, a, a parent whose kids are in the, in the schools in Omaha, uh, trying to get, encourage them to, 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 to use masks uh, this year to be safe. And so the usual suspects are speaking up and we need others to do the same. Uh, it, it can't be just the schools uh, and just, just people like us. We need other political leaders in, in Nebraska to speak up, people from city council. We need uh, uh, health department directors and mayors speaking up and, and have our back so that we can get schools started uh, with, uh, with the universal masking uh, so we can prevent the possibility of overwhelming our hospitals. Uh, and so at this point, I think it is time to, for people to speak up. It is time uh, to sin by silence when they should protest makes cowards of men by uh, Ella Wheeler Wilcox. Um, last thing I want to talk about is political leadership versus pandering. Uh, I was at a, a talk by Dr. Ali Khan who shared this slide yesterday. Um, and this is, should be a very disturbing slide to people. You know, this is basically who you voted for last election versus did you get a vaccine? And there's a very steep curve here, and this shouldn't be the case. It, vaccination is, should not be political. Vaccination is a scientific, provable thing. Does it work? Does it not work? What are the risks versus the benefits? Uh, all of us should be able to do math equally uh, and make these decisions. And so this shouldn't be here. So how do you fix this? Well, what we need is uh, political leadership from Republicans to speak out against this and say, look, you need to get vaccinated. You know, one of the things that Trump did right was Operation Warp Speed, and he should be taking credit for it. He deserves credit for it. He himself got vaccinated. What I don't understand is why he's not encouraging others to get vaccinated. Uh, but, you know, he deserves credit for Warp Speed because that gave us a vaccine in record time. We have some leaders speaking up. Um, I actually was very happy to see Mitch McConnell. You may or may not agree with his policies and his tactics. But when it comes to caring for his constituents, he is taking his own time and spending his own campaign money to, to run 60 second ads, encouraging his constituents to get vaccinated. And this is the kind of leadership we need, need from Republicans right now if we want to avert another disaster and prevent another 100,000 dead Americans. So this is the Republican leadership we need. Uh, and then we've got pandering. Uh, so uh, I was really bothered to see uh, Dr. Uh, or Governor Ricketts interviewing Jay Bhatt Bhattacharya. Uh, he's uh, kind of infamous for his Great Barrington uh, uh, proposal uh, a year and a half ago that kicked, it was part, played a large part in, in us having a 600,000 dead Americans and other countries make, following the same mistakes. Uh, he and a couple others uh, uh, made this proposal, and it's been debunked repeatedly, unfortunately. So I don't know why we're interviewing this guy, uh, because this is just wrong. Uh, the Great Parenting has uh, a number of flaws. Uh, the first was, uh, was, you know, this guy, the other thing is, but try, he's not a, a, health, a public health expert. He's actually a health economist. So he's good at running models. Uh, however, all models are based on certain assumptions. And if those assumptions are wrong, the models are wrong. And these are the assumptions that were used and they're all wrong. Uh, so one is COVID is not one and done. It's like it's not one into like measles. Once you get it, you're immune for life. People are susceptible to the next variant in about six to eight months. And this has been shown uh, repeatedly. You know, the first time we figured this out was Manaus, Brazil, where probably somewhere in the range of 70-ish percent of people had gotten uh, coronavirus and had antibodies. So people thought they were done 
only to find out six to eight months later uh, when the P1 variant came through that all these people got infected. And actually that, that infect, uh, round of infections was worse than the last one. And that's why Brazil has the highest mortality, one of the highest mortalities of any country uh, in the world. They did far worse than us because they, they too, too much bought into this. Uh, the other author is from the United Kingdom. And the United Kingdom initially started going that path, but then a bunch of uh, smarter people in, in the United Kingdom said, whoa, this is crazy. And then Boris Johnson himself got sick, and so that kind of uh, woke him up. Uh, and so they stopped. But then the, the B117 alpha variant came through. It went through, and then pe those uh, people came out and said, oh, we, all, we weren't, maybe this is going to work. Maybe we are at herd humidity, only to have the Delta variant do the exact same thing. Hmm, that's about six to eight months later. Uh, and are we seeing this someplace else? Well, yeah, we, we're seeing it in the South. Uh, so last summer, uh, people thought, ah, uh, it's a seasonal or we'll just let it run. Uh, they had a huge outbreaks in the South last summer. People thought they were at herd humidity, uh, then found out last winter again, it took off again. And here we are yet one more time with the Delta variant taking off one more time again. So every six to eight months until you finally fix this by vaccination and public health measures, you're going to ha keep having outbreaks, more hospitalizations and more deaths. Uh, the other problem is you can't isolate the vulnerable. There was this thought that we'd let it run amongst the young people and then, it, and then we, and we'd somehow protect the old people and that didn't work and that's why we had over 600,000 dead Americans because we couldn't isolate that. You know, the problem we have in Nebraska is, you know, as, as, as proud as Lancaster County is as, as a vaccination rate, the total vaccination for the population is 53%. That's nowhere close to herd immunity. It needs to be in the 80 to 90% to actually work. Certainly, we got our elderly pretty well vaccinated, 89% or almost 90%. But outstate, there are, st there are counties outstate Nebraska where, 60, where in the age of 65 plus, only 25% or so of people are vaccinated. That means 75% of those people are still vulnerable. They're still not wearing masks. And that's where a lot of the, the hospitalizations and deaths are going to happen again. So you can't isolate the elderly, unfortunately. Uh, and natural immunity has actually never been achieved before. It only happens via vaccination, uh, polio, smallpox, and diphtheria. Uh, those all, you know, when's the last time you've heard of people getting any of those? Uh, or public health measures, typhoid. Uh, we, there is a vaccine for typhoid, but you can fix that just with clean uh, water, sanitation, and washing your hands. So nobody gets typhoid in Nebraska anymore. Uh, the other one that, that is really puzzling to me is he went on about lockdowns. No one is arguing for lockdowns. In fact, the very first uh, line uh, on our... Uh, Go back to school guidelines is all children can safely return to in-person education. Nobody's advocating for a lockdown. They're saying we need to bring the kids back to school. We just got to do it safely. And one of those things is universal masking to make it safe. Um, you know, and we can have events as well, just like everybody else in the world is doing. They're doing vaccine verification and or testing. So we could have a safe Garth Brooks concert. We could have safe Husker games if we just vaccinated and or verified a test and we'd be just fine. Uh, so nobody is arguing for, for lockdowns. So they see, you know, I, I keep using this Will Rogers quotes, you know, the three kinds of men, the ones who learn by reading and learning. Uh, but then some people just got to pee on the electric fence for themselves. Maybe there's a fourth kind of person. There's a person who has to keep peeing on the electric fence and doesn't stop. And I'm not sure what's up with that. So as you can tell, I'm a bit frustrated, but the, 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 there is some urgency here. The, we were schools, kids are coming back to school in two to three weeks, and we need to make some decisions. We make them make them very soon. Parents need to know that we want to keep their kids safe. And then to keep your kids safe in a school, you need universal masking. Uh, so again, uh, though, as I've said before, this is my opinion, not necessarily of all these organizations. I am only one of seven school board members, so I don't run the school district, but I do have some input in, and one out of seven votes. Uh, but this is what I do so you can verify what I do. Uh, but again, this is my opinion, not necessarily the organizations I work for.